guys. So I have been lucky enough to acquire a South Bend Model A 9 inch lathe recently. And I've been taking it apart, trying to de-rust it and eventually paint it. Um, but this particular piece, the compound rest, was quite, um, well, it, it, some of it was rusted together and since some of it was uh, maybe manhandled back together again, I would say. Um, so I had a lot of trouble getting it apart. Um, so I kind of, I, I've, I've been looking online, you know, getting some diagrams and getting other people's advice and videos, but there wasn't any, any particular video for this type of compound rest. So I thought I'd just make one and throw it out there. It was kind of a challenge for me. So, um, yeah, I'll show you the process. Here we go. Okay, so we're gonna need a few tools for this process. Um, one of them is a screwdriver kind of like this. Um, this particular one was for pulling out nails, but I, I pounded it flat and modified it so that it will, it will fit what I need it to. And that's actually this piece over here, which mounts on the very end of that. Um, the other tool that's really useful one of these um, and that bad boy comes around for here so this whole unit unscrews um, and I'll show you how I dismantle it in a second but um, this is really the best way to get any torque on this without putting it in a truck and totally destroying it um, so there's that you're gonna also need some white lithium grease for the inner workings here and then I'm using some 30 weight um, oil which is what's recommended for the compound rest um, on the South Bend manuals. Okay so our first step in taking this apart is from here and we're gonna unscrew this. Um, you can tell that mine has had a lot of wear um, and that's just from, I think, other people taking it apart, trying to put it back together again. Um, so unfortunately, this piece right here, which is threaded in the middle, um, that was hammered out um, and it kind of muffin tops over the edges of this piece. Um, so in order to get that off, it kind of, it took a lot of manpower actually. And I, and I did have to file a little bit of this down just because it, it just, it, it was hammered into itself. It wasn't budging. So I will go back and kind of <laughs> go over this area, make it pretty again, try to get rid of those sharp corners. Um, so... what that part looks like. You can tell all the file marks and hammer marks. Um, and then this is the piece that is threaded in there. Now with these components, I did have to let it sit overnight, actually over a night and a day in an evaporist because a lot of this was maybe not oiled the best um, and so it just kind of rusted together over time um, and and disuse um, so this will be the next step you can just pull this off there is a pin in here um, which I found out while taking it apart so that's a good thing to remember these small parts can get kind of lost if you are um, taking things apart and trying to remove rust um, so there's actually two pins in this in this guy so watch out for those they both look like that there we go and for the second one this should just pull off as well like that now here we come to the section so this rotates off and it's pretty loose because I've just put back together and oiled it. Um, but this was really well, um, <laughs> like tons of grease, like uh, rust up in here. So it took a long time to figure out that this came apart this way. It doesn't really, it, the seam is really great. So you're like, is this, is this meant to come off? It must because none of the other components come off unless I take this off. So um, this does work and 
this is my favorite tool for that process now because it gives you the leverage that you need. So this part comes off, it's threaded, and I've got a bunch of lithium grease in there right now. And that pulls off pretty easily. Alrighty, so take the rest of this off. And this whole process is such a learning curve for me because I hadn't dealt with a lot of this stuff before. Surprisingly, a lot of it is quite intuitive. Like, there's this one great YouTuber, Mr. Pete 222 and he always says that the tool will tell you how it needs to be put together and how it needs to be taken apart. And like, in my now limited experience, but it turns out to be true. It's kind of, it's really entertaining. So now you got the pin out, right? So this is the part, and I think this part was hammered for some reason, um, but it, it's a vital component in the whole working of this, this compound slide. So I would re recommend just treating this with a lot of care. Um, now we have our eyelet in there. So that's a brass piece for here, and it does have a pin there. So we're gonna take that out first. I also put lithium grease on all of the screws, so the screw has it as well. And I think it's one of the more volatile things that I've been using. <laughs> I don't think it's very friendly. So wash up good, try not to touch it a whole lot. And we have that apart. Maybe the lighting's not the best in here. If I continue to like do these take apart videos, I'll probably have to find better lighting. All right, so a lot of times you can reach in there and push it up, but finger's not small enough. I'm going to lever it a little bit that way, then get in there. Whoop! <laughs> that was fun. All right, so that's, that's that. Oh, lithium grease everywhere. Probably not good. Um, so this is, this, I forget what this is called. I would call it an eyelet. It's cool. It's brass. Um, and I guess they're frequently, most frequently replaced part of, of this setup. And then that pulls right off. And I have some great pictures of what this liked before I I got to it um, and the first time I took it apart. So I'll add those to this little thing and I'll make a montage. So then we can see the jib here. That as well. And then our step pins here which are kind of out because I haven't, I haven't tried to reset it up. Um, but there we go. This whole piece is just one, one cast piece. And I'm going to go over and remove the paint from this because I'd like to repaint the whole thing as well, which will be a different undertaking. But I'll try to, try to record for you all. Um, oh, the other set pin is in here. So if you this piece out and if you're cleaning it and taking it all apart like it, it's important to know where these guys are so you don't lose them here we go he is in there under this set screw or adjusting screw I guess there we go I'm gonna keep those separate that's how you take it apart now how about we put it back together so the first time I took this guy apart, I um, I had to soak it in the vapor rest, right? Um, and then I took all the pieces apart and I put them all in that simple green. And simple green just, it's, you can make a bath and it, it just gets rid of that grease for you. Um, and that's important when you're trying to de de-rust it because if you have the old grease over it it's not going to clean as well um so i did that 
put it in the evaporist, then washed it off with some water, um, then I put a good coat of WD-40 over it, and then I oiled up everything. And the WD-40 just makes sure that I don't have any residual water from, from the wash in there or any simple green or evaporust left in any crevices. So I got that all done and cleaned up. I oiled it and now I'm ready to put it back together. Um, so the, the 30 weight, that goes over most of the components. Um, and then this white lithium grease I just use for the screws. Um, and then it's kind of a, it's just a heavy grease. And like I said, it's kind of toxic. So be careful with that stuff. Um, so let's get started. Now I've been shooting this video in small little video segments because well, honestly, I've been afraid to like mess up. And when I get nervous, things tend to go wrong and I tend not to say the right thing. So if this video ends up being in like 3000 little clips, that, that's why, but it's all fun and games, right? Now this is oiled up before, but I might have my set screws in. I also need to figure out a better camera setup because right now it's like over the back chair. So I'm like leaning over it. All right, I'm gonna leave these loose for now. And I'm going to pop that eyelet back in. It's kind of important to note the orientation of the eyelet because once it's in there, it's hard to get in and, and change it a little bit. Um, I also want to look at this piece and decide what the front was and oh, just like Mr. Pete said, you can tell that that's where the set screw was right there. So, um, the tool basically showed us which way it's used to going. So we're gonna take its advice and put it back in there, hopefully the right way. There we go. If I remember this is set about like that. So I'm gonna want to check depth of my eyelet. It's amazing how like many things are like akin to bow making. Um, you gotta get the eyelet at the right height otherwise things aren't gonna be moving correctly. Maybe we'll set this in. I want that, yeah, there we go. I want that set all the way back so I can thread in the next part. I tried wearing gloves, but then of course I had to take them off because they're too cumbersome. Safer, yes. Trickier to navigate with, also, also yes. All right. So I guess our next piece should be this set screw here. Set screw, set screw, I think it's a set screw. And of course I'm amateur here, so I am going to claim that right now. If people have tips or tricks for any of this stuff, or are, <laughs> are just maybe a little peeved that I'm not using the right names for things, I'm gonna tell you, um, I'm new to this, I'm learning, so I, and I'd love to learn more, so put it in a comment if you guys have something to say about it. Right, it goes there. Now this won't set in, of course, if you don't have this progressed far enough forward. Um, and if you're getting any like difficulty turning or or grittiness, there might be still debris in those. Um, it's, you know, still in that way. Debris, debris, okay. And here's where this tool comes in. So for loosening it, of course, we went this way for tightening it. Put it around here. And this is kind of modified, this one, because the tab here wasn't small enough. So I just filed that baby down and it sits in well enough to turn. So, 
that's where that torque comes from. It's great. I love this one because it's adjustable too. So if I need it for other things, it will be there, which, which is great. All right. These surfaces touch and rub against each other constantly. So I'm gonna make sure that's clean and then I'm gonna oil it up again. So it's just an oily mess all over right now, but that's what's happening. Right. Put that bad boy back in there. Fits, great. <laughs> now for the oil. There we go. Okay. So let's not forget, this is the one, right? Because we want to keep them separate from each other. This is the one for the handle, and this is the one for here. I'm gonna put that in there. Here we go, look at that. It's not all the way tight so I can still turn. That's great, that's exactly what I want. The other one is a little bit more tricky. So a little bit more tension. You can tell, so this isn't all the way. I would never be able to turn that in there. So we know already. There we go, <laughs> that's not out far enough. I just pushed this forward. Um, matching these up. Ooh, wow, the shadow, it's amazing. Okay, notch there, notch here. I'm gonna match those up without this falling down. Yay. Let's see if we can get this in here. A little bit of finagling, because this set, this pin is, it goes in quite, um, quite tight. So after we've messed with that it's a little bit, we're gonna put the last piece on, hooray. This guy should thread on nicely. Right now, like I said, I do wanna clean this up because I don't think it, I think it looks rough right now. Tighten it up, and there we go. So that is how you take apart, put back together one of these. And and this isn't, I, I think that there are different models for this, and a lot of the examples online were of a different make than this. Um, so I'm not really sure the difference. This one is in the manual that I found online. There's a PDF for the South Bend lathe, I think, posted by it was like a military thing but I can I can look that up and post it as well um there you go easy peasy once you got the rust off and it's nice and greased up it kind of don't look too bad right it look great with a new paint job though maybe a little bit more polishing this is though the the surface that touches the apron so <laughs> careful in using abrasives for that um I've been trying to be very gentle and use scotch Bright actually to take, take like the rust off of that surface. Um, long WD-40 is my best friend. Well, there we go. I hope that was a little bit um, helpful, um, entertaining maybe, and we'll see you next time. Bye.